How's it going everybody? In this video I wanted to give a little bit of uh, excitement and hopefully get you guys a little bit pumped up. So I just took and passed the VCP uh, DCV, the VMware Certified Professional Desktop Virtualization or uh, Data Center Virtualization Exam. So I just went and took VMware vSphere 6.7, the exam for that. The uh, 2v0-21.19. So uh, uh, I did take the exam at home uh, through Pearson View using the OnView software. So let me talk a little bit about that since it's literally, I just got done taking the exam about an hour ago. Um, so the exam itself was pretty straightforward. Um, it was one of those things where you go through, you take the exam. Um, so I took the Palo Alto exam uh, a couple months ago, back in August, and uh, passed that one as well, fortunately. So this exam was a little bit different because of the fact that it's VMware, not Palo Alto, obviously, different, uh, different vendor, different track. So this one was something that I was already familiar with. I've got a lot of experience with VMware. So um, there was a lot of reading back through the documentation, watching videos, trying to get back up to speed and how things worked and stuff like that. So I had been studying for probably the last three or four weeks on it, going through, watching. I've uh, got a CBT Nuggets subscription, so I went out and watched a bunch of CBT Nuggets videos on 6.5 and 6.7 and was reading the documentation um, just to refresh my memory on how things worked. And um, yeah, it, it went pretty well. I can't really complain too much about that experience at all. So as I got done with my prep, I started building out labs and testing different features and capabilities. Um, because I, it had been, it's been a number of years, probably four or five since I've taken a VMware exam. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I wasn't sure if the new exams, uh, the certification process had changed or if the delivery of the exam was gonna have any more like, you know, pop-ups or, you know, um, instead of just asking a question and giving you multiple choices that there were gonna be actual like exhibits that you'd have to look at and be able to interpret what's going on and then, you know, respond to the, the the scenario, whether it was actually gonna show you like, hey, this is what's happening, tell me, explain what's going on here. So a lot of multiple choice questions, you know, in this scenario, what would you do here? If, uh, wh what particular feature are they talking about there? If this is the problem, what would you, if you're the administrator, go do? So a lot of that type of basic stuff. So VMware Certified Professional is very much like the CCNA on the Cisco side of the house. It's um, a lot of theory. Um, you really have to know, in my opinion, what's going on. You can't just read the documentation and then just hope for the best. Um, documentation alone, in my opinion, is not enough. You have to lab this stuff up because there are questions like, um, do you know what this is? You know, uh, knowing how the features and the capabilities work obviously is very, very important. Uh, it's actually critical. Um, required for you to pass, but at the same point in time, there are questions that it asks you. If you don't under, if you've never tested something out, like if you've never snapshotted a VM, or you've never done a V motion, or you've never set up iSCSI connectivity, or you've never done vCenter high availability, or done enhanced linked mode, if you've never done anything semi advanced, then or you just literally just read the documentation and you're hoping for the best, um, you might pass. But in my opinion, you'd be much better uh, giving yourself a much better fight or a fighting chance if you were to actually have lab this stuff up. So VMware does have some options for that with the VMware Hands-On Labs, HOLs. Um, I definitely would recommend you looking that up. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to VMware Hands-On Labs for you to test those things out. Uh, they're free, which is nice. But uh, overall, I have built a home lab that allows me to play around with the stuff. And I also have purchased access to the VMUG Advantage plan. So VMware Users Group or VMUG is what it's referred to. They've got a subscription plan where if you pay $200 a year, you gain access to a plethora of software and the licenses that are associated to that software. So if you want to do a bunch of testing for 
whatever it is you want to play with, whether it's NSX, whether it's desktop mobility with Horizon, whether it's data center virtualization with the ESXi and vCenter, there's a lot of different capabilities that it offers. That's what I've been using. So whenever you see videos come out on this stuff, guess what? That's what it is it's going to be, you're going to be tested on. So I have VMware Workstation 16 installed on a dedicated server. So my virtual, my VMware lab is all virtual. Um, so I have a dedicated physical server, one server that I installed ESIC or a VMware Workstation 16.2. I have a, a VMware a VMUG license associated to it, so it's basically good for a year. And then I am downloaded um, v, the vCenter server appliance 6.7, and I also downloaded, I've got uh, ESXi 6.5 and 6.7. Uh, I spent the majority of my time on 6.5 hosts, um, but inside of vCenter server 6.7. So completely doable, right? There's only a handful of things that really change from 6.5 to 6.7. The most notable is going to be encrypted VMs. Um, that's one of the main things. And there's a few other little minor things that come into play, but I'm not going to really get into those the, the deltas between the two because, you know, there's really not, there's not enough to make it warrant a dedicated video, in my opinion. So... A lot of the same things you do in 6.5, you can do in 6.7. Encrypted vir virtual machines are pretty much the the big whiz bang wow, if you will. There's a couple other ones, and it just they're escaping me at the moment. So, as I was preparing for this, I started spinning stuff up. Like vCenter High Availability has been in, available since 6.5. Uh, I tested that out; that worked. Um, I also went and did uh, my my big thing was doing enhanced linked mode. So I could deploy multiple vCenter servers and get them all up and running and set that up to where I could scale out some stuff. So now that I have a much better understanding of how to scale a virtual environment beyond what I already was familiar with, I am working on building out a lab right now and doing a series of videos on it. So that'll be coming in the very near future. But... Um, I'm also working on the, the, the CCMP stuff as well, trying to get those videos knocked out. And I'm also trying to test out new features. So part of my day job as a full-time instructor is to develop things in uh, testing environments. So one of the things I'm going to be diving into, which doesn't seem like it's a huge topic scope, um, not like NSX, which is, in my opinion, which is a huge topic scope, uh, just like data center virtualization is. Um, I'm going to be diving into desktop mobility next. It doesn't seem as much of content to go through. I could probably go through some learning in the next two to four weeks, learn everything I need to learn, deploy what I need to deploy, and get a working scenario up and running, and do some demonstrations for you guys in some videos later on. Um, I also have the ambition to go knock out the advanced professional certs. So I've always wanted to go become a VCAP for the longest time, and I'm now thinking about pulling the trigger. So uh, because I spend a lot of time labbing the features up in VC for VCP, even though VCP is 99% of the questions you're going to get are, you know, in a given scenario or, you know, or in a given scenario, or you'll get one where it's like they're describing a particular feature, what the feature does, and you have to pick what feature it is in the multiple choice questions or whatever the answers are. So uh, there's that. So I really want to go towards the VCAP side of the house because I've pretty much brought everything up on up and running. The only thing that I ha would have to figure out how to get working would be vSphere replication. So if you wanted to have a second site and then replicate everything from one data center, uh, one v uh, one site to another site into another uh, vCenter implementation, how to get that to work. That's something I've never really done. So I had to test that out and see how that would work. So that's basically my goal. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what it is that I scored on. So I was able to, um, I scored a 443. I did pretty well in the exam overall, but then again, I've got an experience with VMware. So I found the test to be not, not easy, but not difficult. Um, if, you do, if you're new to VMware and you're just studying for this stuff for the first time, you're going to find it more difficult than I did. But I've been, do, I've been dealing with VMware for years. Uh, going on, I think the first VMware certification I got was 2014, I think, was the first one I picked up. So not a long time ago. 
but not recently either. So it's not like I used, uh, the very first one I picked up was the, um, the VMware Certified Associate for data center virtualization. The majority of what I've done in my career has been on the vCenter server and ESXi side of the house, so I'm obviously much more familiar with those platforms than I am you know, desktop mobility or NSX. But with that being said, that's where I basically came into play. So I'm r rather happy. Um, I have not gotten the, um, the updated logo yet from VMware. I'm waiting for that to come through. The, I haven't even, all I've gotten so far is this, this score report. And this came from uh, Pearson View. So uh, that's what I got. And when you, so just real quick on how that flow worked. When you take your exam through Pearson View, um, you obviously have to go through a number of steps. I have three monitors in front of me. I have one 36 inch that's a Dell monitor that's sitting in front of me. And then I got two 27 inch Dell monitors sitting in front of me. So I've got one, two, three. Um, I took down the big one and one of the little ones. And I only ran with one because last time I took a, an exam, it was all on the big, a big monitor. And that was a lot of white coming at me. And I do not do well with white screens. As you can tell, I'm a, I'm a dark mode kind of guy. So um, I did one monitor, it was a 27 inch. I actually had a much better experience doing a smaller monitor than I did a really big monitor. Um, the exam, the, the proctor came in almost right away. I think I waited there a minute or two after I checked in and did all my pictures. Um, I had a couple little things like I had to pick the camera up and flip it around to show that there was nothing going on and which I'm, I'm okay with picking up the webcam and swinging it around. And then I had some, uh, I have a Bluetooth keyboard and the keyboard had, has a pen tray. It's actually designed to hold an iPad and uh, it's a Logitech wireless keyboard. And I had a couple of pens in there because I just did, right? And they told me that wasn't allowed. So I moved them to the tray that sits in my desk. Okay, fine, I moved them, I verified. He's like, okay, cool, you're good. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm not going to sit there and argue with the proctor. I'm just going to do what they ask. Because to be honest with you, one, I don't want the headache of having to, to argue with them. And two, I don't want to be uh, disqualified and not allowed to take the test because uh, uh, I was just being difficult. You know, just do what the proctor asks you to do and get through it because, you know, you're spending money on these exams. Just do what, do what you're asked. I find it simpler just to uh, oblige spend your 45 minutes or whatever it is in your exam and then move on with your life. You know, not, not worth arguing about it if you ask me. So the exam, unlike Cisco, which I'm uh, used to Cisco exams where they pop up and you have like a little tutorial you go through and you note that you're uh, 18 years old or whatever the case might be. Uh, this one here, it drops you right into the exam. I mean, you're, I think it was like two or three clicks and boom, I was in the test. And it was like, whoa, that's, that's fast. So um, that happened, and then I went through the exam. It was 70 questions. Um, I don't remember it telling me the minimum score initially, but uh, it's a well-known fact. If you do any VMware, if you do any uh, searches, you'll find out exactly how much. I think 95% uh, sure. I'll have to do a little bit of searching, but VMware tells you what the minimum score is. So. Um, I took the exam. The exam went well. I found the majority of the questions to be easy to answer. Um, but then again, I have experience with VMware, uh, a number of years of experience. And I have several deployments under my belt at varying degrees. Some are just real simple. I need to create a virtual machine or I need to you know, move a port group around. I need to work with uh, distributed switches. I am comfortable working inside of vCenter and I know the navigation for the majority of things. Um, stuff like that. So it made it very, very easy for me to, uh, that, that wasn't the hard part. But then again, this isn't the advanced exam where you're actually having to navigate around. This is answering questions based off of your knowledge of VMware. And I'm already knowledgeable on VMware. I just had to take what I learned from 6.0, which was the last test I took, and then upgrade that knowledge to 6.5 and 6.7, which didn't take very long at all. So I went through some training, uh, a couple weeks worth. I went through the training, took a lot of notes, read some documentation and stuff that, I, that the videos weren't clear on that I felt like I needed to dive into more. And I felt pretty good about the overall exam. So I scheduled it earlier in the week um, because I didn't, really didn't think I needed to spend two weeks preparing for it because I'd already spent a number of weeks up to this point going through it. So I scheduled it for a few days later and then I took the test. As you can see, I really didn't need the extra time. I could, probably could have taken it later that day. 
Um, I don't know if I would have actually done that, but I'm glad that I went through and did some additional uh, reading and stuff like that on some areas that I wasn't comfortable with, which was more of the operation side of the house with you know alarms and you know tagging and some other stuff that I looked into. Not so much the configuration piece because I already knew how to configure everything. So if they ask me questions on a particular feature, I spend a lot of time on the high availability side of the house and things like how HA heart beating works and you know that type of stuff because I felt like that was necessary. But something I have not spent as much time on, you know, in configuration. But I did that. Uh, so I did at the very end of your exam, you do get a uh, when you next next through. Um, you do get a congratulations, you passed. I'm trying to think here. There was one like I got to question 70, I click next, and then it prompted me in and it says, uh, Congratulations, you passed. It's like it gives you your, your pass, right? And then you click to the next screen and then it gives you your congratulations, you passed. And you uh, basically it gives you this output right here. And I went through next, 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 and then I ended, exited it out of on view, and I was in really good shape at that point. So with that being said, let me talk, take a couple more minutes and talk about the next steps that I have. So my next steps were pretty straightforward. I decided that I wanted to go into uh, desktop mobility. Um, I have some reasons for that that are both personal and professional goals. So personal goals, I want to learn it, professional. Um, some of the things that I'm doing for my day job, um, I'm working on trying to improve a couple of things that were currently deployed and make them um, more fluid and easier to understand, easier to work with. So one of those things is going to be, and if you click on digital workspace, is desktop mobility. So if I click on the VCP for this guy for 2020, uh, I'm going to click on him, and this brings you to Horizon. So Horizon View is going to be the des basically it's desktop virtualization. So you can take a, um, and I don't know a lot about it. So if I'm for those of you that are more more well versed on this stuff, please feel free to comment below. But um, you're basically taking an operating system that you're going to deploy, and you're basically templatizing a golden image, and then you're able to rapidly deploy that same image multiple times. Now, there are things like uh, some like rapid provisioning and things like that. I don't know how far I'm going to be able to take it. So because I haven't looked into the licensing, I haven't looked into what software capabilities that I have. But in the event that you are and uh, have the intentions of diving into desktop mobility or desktop management, um, I think it's really cool what you can do with this. So basically, the effect that you get is um, if you want to provide a virtual desktop to a particular user, um, you have a couple ways that you can do that. So the the way that I've been delivering virtual desktops is allow the user to VPN in with uh, some sort of remote access feature like AnyConnect. They, they VPN into an environment and then they have a IP address or a DNS entry that they are able to plug into the remote desktop console and then they t authenticate to that and they're brought to a, an RDP session. Okay, that, that works out just fine, right? However, if I am sitting at my home and let's say for example, or I'm sitting at work and I can't take, VPN's not allowed. Let's just hypothetically throw that out there. But you can pull up a, a secure website. So one of the th things that I run into a lot with students is there's this VPN then RDP flow logic that messes people up, especially with some of the students I deal with, they're more entry level. They don't have the technical background that I have or a lot of other engineers. So Sometimes they just don't know what to do. They're, they're lost, they don't know the next steps, and a lot of times people are kind of sheepish. They don't want to click their way through something or play around with it for the fear of breaking it. That's fine. That's, um, uh, those are respectable attributes, but at the same point in time, if you're gonna be an engineer, network engineer, systems engineer, you're gonna to have to learn how to click around and try to figure stuff out. That's, the, that's just the nature of the beast, right? So. One thing that I'm planning on doing is going through this. Now, um, I have a VCP, and I'm going to, going to choose this one right here. So I already have an existing VCP, which is cool because now, if you already have an existing VCP in another track, then all you have to do is 
learn the technology, learn the platform, and then take the required class. Or I'm sorry, take the required exam, excuse me. Um, so I'm gonna be taking this exam here, which is a Horizon 77, which is gonna be the 2B0-5119. 51 being specifying Horizon View, 19 being, meaning that, that particular exam was, um, as of 2019 was the latest release. Now there are newer releases for other tracks like Data Center Virtualization, it's got tw uh, 2120, would be 2020 was the release of that exam. Now I'm not gonna get into how the exam rotations work, that's not what this video is about, but this is where I'm gonna be going with it. Because it doesn't seem like there's a lot to talk about, uh, or a lot to go over. So there's already some training that I have access to that I'm gonna be using in order to, to do this. And then once I have gone through that training, I'm gonna circle back and take this test because I, my, the goal is to try to deploy this particular feature in my day job to see if that's going to be a better delivery experience for the students that I'm testing. So, because the company that I work for, we have our own homegrown certification program. So, um, that's basically that. So, and then I'm gonna circle back once I have this one out of the way and then I'm gonna do NSX. Now, I don't, I'm not in a hurry to do uh, NSX, to be honest with you. I'm gonna take some time to learn that one out because there's a lot to go on with it. And I'm not in a, I gotta you know, hurry up and get it done. I'm honestly gonna take my time with that one and really learn it. Uh, just same thing with this one. Horizon View doesn't seem like there's that much to cover. So the training that I've seen, it's like eight to 10 hours of content. And I'm like, okay, where there was, 25 hours of content for data center virtualization. There's close to 20 hours of content for NSX. So obviously to me, in my, just in how many hours it takes to cover a particular topic, guess what? DTM seems like it would be an easier barrier to entry and uh, stuff like that. So I'm gonna go play around with this stuff and um, stuff like that. And then I will um, record some content on it. I am currently working on a VMware a VCP course. I'm also going to be dubbing it VCAP or VMware Certified as Advanced Professional for the simple fact that I have the intention at some point in the future of taking the VCAP exam. But I'm obviously going to want to become much more proficient in what it is that I'm doing than just hoping and because uh, the exam is way more expensive. I think it's like 450 bucks. So I definitely want to take my time you know, with that one and play around with the technology since I have the ability to do so. So um, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in this video. If you guys have any questions about VMware certification or anything like that, or you would, uh, you've would you got something that you would like me to cover about VMware, um, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see all of you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.